What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTB Ravens Media, bringing you Ravens content every single day. If you want to stay up to Ravens content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell as well if you want to get notified every single time we upload a brand new video. Now, this is also going to be a podcast episode, so if you're listening on the podcast platform, check out the YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube and you want to see what the future segments will be, you can check out the full podcast episode already. It's already going to be live, um, so make sure to go check that out as well. This video, this podcast episode, this segment is going to be related to combine, you know, performers, combine dominators, the combine masters, the guys that had a strong showing, and we're going to be talking about them, their combine performance, and then their connection to the Baltimore Ravens, and if the Baltimore Ravens should draft them, will they draft them, all those types of things. Now, you know, we want to specify that there were more guys than this. We will make more videos, and we will definitely, tomorrow, we'll also be performing um, coming out with a, a video talking about a lot of the HBCU, um, you know, combine standouts because there were some guys that really stood out from HBCU. So we definitely want to bring them up, um, you know, in their own video and stuff like that. But, you know, three guys that we'll be talking about today, Jordan Davis, Trevor Penning, and Nick Cross, all guys, you know, a lot of Ravens fans have going in mock drafts to the Ravens. So we'll be talking about them. Let's start off with Jordan Davis. Now, quickly, I'm going to run through his combine and his stats. Jordan Davis, we all know, the big boy, six foot six, 341 pounds. He's not a quarterback, so hand size doesn't matter, but 10 and three inch, three and three quarters inches. Um, and then, you know, 34 inch arms. He ran a 478 40 yard dash. If you guys have not seen that video, that is an impressive, impressive video. Um, you know, he is a D tackle, uh, but he shows that athleticism that shows up on tape as well. 32 inch vertical jump, fantastic. 123 broad jump, very solid. You know, he, he was known to be an athletic freak, but, and I was like, okay, I'm thinking he'll run a little bit under, you know, a five, a four, seven, eight. That's unbelievable. He, he shattered my expectations. Joshua, what are your thoughts on Jordan Davis? You know the the big boy out of Georgia. I mean, just think about it. last year he did he did score a run running uh, a rushing touchdown as well. So you know that just you know uh, it speaks on his athleticism, what he brings to the table. I mean, we all know he's a freaking nature. If you didn't watch that Georgia defense, you should have you should have watched it. And you know when when he got his hands on you, it pretty much was a wrap. And he know how to run down quarterbacks. So you know finding someone in the interior to chase down the uh, quarterback and you got a dock you away on the outside, that would be that would be a match made in heaven. But do I feel like the Ravens should make a pick, should make that uh, pick at 14? No, I do not think so. Um, the reason I say that, because we still have a Justin Matabike and also a Broderick Washington, Isaiah Mack. And even if you bring a Jelly Roll that showed a lot of effort in a lot of plays last year, I mean, you have interior guys on this, on this team on his roster that can bring a lot to the table. And I feel like with Justin Matabike going into his uh I guess his, we can call it his junior year, his third year, I feel like he's gonna bring he's gonna bring a lot more to the table. And also let's not forget the Clayus Campbell reunion is not off the table as well. So you may have him back. So you know as much uh as I love what he done in the combine um and what he brought to the table, yeah his stock then gone up even higher than it was before. I don't feel like at 14 we need to go make we need we need to take that pick that high. Yeah, when when we're talking about Jordan Davis, I think we're both huge fans of Jordan Davis and his game. I think we're both we both think that he will be a very solid NFL player. That you know, that's not the question with Jordan Davis. The question is is a defensive tackle, a nose tackle worth a top 15 draft selection? When you're looking at the Baltimore Ravens roster, if they had one need, right, and it was they need a D-tackle, you absolutely go Jordan Davis, right? Like, he he is the D-tackle, mm -hmm. all right? However, when you look at the Ravens roster, D-tackle is not the biggest need. It's not the second biggest need. It's not the third biggest need. It is like a small, yeah, they could improve there type of need. Because we, like you brought up, Joshua, we have Justin Matabike. We have potentially Calais Campbell. We have Jelly Roll Justin Ellis. We have, you know, potentially bringing back Derek Wolf. We have a lot of D linemen, you know, that we can substitute in and out. Now, if the Ravens were to do something where they trade back and they have multiple first round picks and they're picking at 20 and I don't know, 20 and 25 randomly, I don't know the teams. I don't think that would be possible. But let's say they do, then 
going for a Jordan Davis and filling a massive hole if they were to go after a tackle or, you know, a, a bigger position of need, I would actually be pretty okay with it because then our first round pick will still be getting someone yep. that can be at a, a bigger position of need. But the big thing about Jordan Davis is I believe he will be a player that can contribute right away. I, I think day one, he can be your starting defensive tackle no matter where he's drafted unless it's the Rams and they got Aaron Donald um, or, or, you know, a team with like a superstar. Like I think he could play starting from day one, but that's only playing about 35, 40% of the snaps. The Ravens need a guy with their first round pick. They want more production out of him, right? You want a Rashad Bateman type of guy, a guy that can be out there when he's healthy every snap, you know, a, a Lamar Jackson, right? Lamar Jackson, boom, he's able to play. Now the Ravens didn't want to play him his rookie year. That's besides the point, but overall you want, that initial experience to come out. We don't want to draft someone that can't play consistently. And this isn't a knock on Jordan Davis. This is just his position is, is less valuable in the NFL today than it was 10, 15, especially 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like how many Vince Wilforks do we see in the NFL nowadays? Not many. Like, Not many. I mean, we got one. His name's Brandon Williams, and most Ravens fans want Brandon Williams gone because he gets paid a lot of money and he can barely be out on the field. And he's still a good player, but he's not as needed in the modern game. Jordan Davis, freak athlete. The Ravens would be a better defense with Jordan Davis. But they could be an even better defense if they drafted somebody else. You know, if they went after, you know, there, there's so many different players that we could go, but... My assertion is if the Ravens trade back and have two first round picks, I'm all in on Jordan Davis. I am all in on Jordan Davis. If, if we hear the Ravens have traded pick 14 for pick, I don't know, 19, and then we traded, you know, two second round picks or whatever to get pick 25, I'm like, we're sitting there at 19. I'm like, draft Jordan Davis. Just like we talked about Adafi Owe and Gregory Rousseau. Don't draft him unless we sign a Justin Houston because we need to fill that need. Yep. So that, that's my take on it. What do you think about the whole trading back? Because I think we're in agreement on if we only take one player in the first round, don't have it be Jordan Davis. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if we was to find a way to get uh, get ourselves back in the first round and we did, you know, with our first pick drive Jordan Davis, we will also have to draft another immediate impact player. And, um, you know, so – because, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we just called off all the different names that we have in the interior D-line. I mean, as much as a Jordan Davis would look good in a black and purple, and, of course, like we, like McConnell said, and I'm, I'm agreeing with you, it's nothing against him. He's going to be a household name. I mean, especially if he keeps on working at his craft and become becomes better and better, and, you know, maybe he could be somewhere in Detroit. You know, a, a team that really needs someone that can really uh, make a push, or maybe even a Washington type of team. Because I did hit, I did hit the Commanders. Uh, supposedly, are willing to give up five first round picks for Russell Wilson. It's crazy, crazy. But that's what I saw some rumors around. But um, <laughs> wow, we would literally had to find our, find ourselves back in the first round to you know draft a corner or either get ourselves a, a offensive a offensive tackle you know for me to be okay with us drafting Jordan Davis. Yeah, I I think we're both in agreement right there, guys. Let us know what you guys think. You know, I know there's some people in the comments. We see it, um, you know, in the mock drafts and, and in the live streams. A lot of people are big fans of Jordan Davis. You know it. Let, give us your thoughts on Jordan Davis, you know, in the comment section and all the things like that. We want to hear what you guys have to say um, about him, about his combine. What did you think? Were you surprised? Were you were you disappointed? Did you think he'd run faster? Did you think he'd, you know, did you think he'd be stronger? Did you think he'd, he'd be more athletic? I don't know. You know, maybe you had extreme expectations. But, you know, let's move into.